whatever the topic, doesn't matter that the, I'm teaching algebra, I'm teaching physics, that process of working one-on-one -on -one always, it, it forms my mindset as, as a teacher. And welcome to Teach Through the Word, the podcast for Bible teachers. Peyton Jones, Jonathan Ferguson, welcome back. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. And I'm hanging in the Harvard Library this week. Oh, you got a library background. Nicely yeah. done. Yeah. Yep. All right. This is actually take two because we have been messing around a little too much in here. You know, every time we start one of these episodes, I feel like somebody's laughing. Somebody's messing around. I think it seems to be our, to me our goal is to make people start the episode wondering, what did I miss? What just happened? Mm. You actually miss a lot. You miss a lot right before this. But uh, we got to get to this. We're doing our very first interview series. This week, we're going to be doing an interview all week long. We do uh, Bible teacher interviews. And our first interview, surprisingly enough, is going to be one of us. I will let Peyton reveal who that is in just a moment. But to get us started, we are here to equip you, Bible teachers, to do what you do better. And together with you to elevate the craft of Bible teaching Get equipped, get trained, and while you're at it, get a behind-the-scenes look here at Through Word. So be, speaking of behind-the-scenes, who are we going behind-the-scenes with, Peyton? Well, Chris, it's going to be none other than our uh, main man on Through the Word. Uh, and I'm not talking about Jesus. We're talking about uh, Jesus is always Christoph, Christopher <laughs> Langham, Christopher G., which is a uh, gangsta Langham. G? And we're, G? yeah, we my figured, middle initial you know, is A. It's Alan. Yeah, no, no, not anymore. <laughs> I just pulled the Jesus on you. Henceforth, you shall be known as Christopher oh. G. Langham. <laughs> hmm. But here's That's... the thing, right? Like, we, we kind of figured that if we were going to do this, right, and we we're going to get in teachers like Swindoll, Alistair Begg, uh, and, and others that have inspired us and we've learned from we figured that it, it would kind of be a miss if the number one teacher that people listen to on Through the Word wasn't our first guest. And of course, you were easier to get than those other guys. So we decided we'd go with that. <laughs> I think the easier to get is an important point here. And I like how you, how you called it before we've actually hooked to any of these, uh, any of these big fish to come in. We, we're all really excited about hoping, hoping to get some, some good names who have inspired us in Bible teaching. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you got me for the interview today. So, uh, so I'm going to hand it over to, to Peyton as the interviewer. I'm going to sit back on my couch back here behind me and, uh, and allow Dr. Peyton oh, to, to oh grill no. me. Oh no, my friend, you're doing all the heavy lifting today. <laughs> but first off, Chris, we want to jump into the deep sea of you. We want to <laughs> find... <laughs> We want to find out who you are. This is going to be like Rod Tidwell, you know, on uh, Jerry Maguire when he goes on that interview. And he goes, you're not going to make me do it. Not going to make me do it. And he starts crying. So, I'm not uh, going to cry. Go... <laughs> you're not going to do it. Uh, but here's what we're Jonathan's going to do. cutting gonna... onions in the back. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to start off, Chris. You know, it, it, a teacher is, you know, Lloyd-Jones defined... Um, preaching as truth mediated through personality. Your personality and who you are is really important. And obviously, our listeners have learned so much about you. I just went through journey two, uh, back to back, getting ready for the other recording we're doing. I am learning so much about you. And I would imagine many of our listeners already feel they know you, but we'd love to kind of have you go back because we want to hear about your journey, your breakthrough, your influences. And a lot of that starts with with who you were bo both before Christ and after Christ. So we want to hear some of your background, some of the the ingredients that God mixed together to make you who you are, which leads to the teach you are. So start back, go back early, like your formative years, how you grew up, your background. Tell us a little bit of your story. So, well, there's a lot of story to tell. So I'll try to focus on the the stuff that's actually relevant to to me as a teacher. And what was formative to, to who I am as a teacher? I I absolutely was not uh, born to teach in the sense of I didn't grow up thinking I'm going to get up there and teach. I I I I didn't like standing in front of crowds. I had a a very normal human fear of public speaking. 
uh, largely uh, influenced by the fact that in all through my teenage years, my voice would crack terribly every time I would get up to speak. I, I had one of those voices. I, I grew pretty tall, pretty fast in my high school years. And uh, it just, it was terrible. <laughs> and so I didn't like getting up to speak. I did enjoy acting though, which for me was very different. I, uh, in fourth grade, my parents convicted, uh, convinced me to, um, to be in a play. I was in the, the little prince. I played the Fox and I actually met my wife in a play. So I did some acting, but for me, that was always different. That's being somebody else on stage. Um, but as far as being a teacher, one of the things that, that what, probably my first glimmer that I had a gift of teaching, uh, was in class in class. I was always the kid in class who understood what the teacher was talking about and recognized that the kids around me didn't. I remember so many times the, the math teacher asking, are there any questions? And I'd sit there like, of course, there's no questions. They don't even know where to start. But I, I, would, I would understand. I just had this natural ability to understand what was, was going on. I was good at school. I was particularly good at math. And in math class, I would get it. And I was the one who would always explain it to the kid next to me. Knew they were lost. And I didn't see that as teaching, but that process, that practice was, was always just explaining the difficult stuff to somebody at their level. And uh, it didn't, uh, it didn't hurt that my, uh, I had a professor mom and a, uh, a dad who, uh, although not employed as a, as a teacher was always, always explaining both my parents. If you ask them a question would, uh, will go back. 10,000 years of history and explain everything that, that led up to it. And, and that's just who they were. And that informed a lot of how I teach. I, I really learned a lot from my mom's style of teaching and uh, yeah, yeah, but I didn't pursue it. I actually went into engineering because mm. I was good at math and uh, pursued rocket science, worked on rockets for a while, but something radical happened my last year of college. I got saved. And I have to throw this out there because when you said this to me recently at floored me, you worked with, Sally Ride of 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 NASA, like she is astronaut, the first American woman in space. Yes. Oh my gosh, so amazing <laughs> to me. Like it floored me when you said that. I could not believe it. And you're like, yeah, I, I, you know, I actually, I, you know, I was kind of a punk when I worked for. Her. <laughs> I don't brag about it because we kind of bumped heads. I drove her a little bit crazy. I was. I was a little too big for my britches in college and thought I knew more than everybody else. And so uh, I didn't, I, I didn't disrespect Sally ride, but yeah, we, uh, yeah, she worked at university of California, San Diego, and I got to work on a project called KidSat, which is now called earth cam, uh, when I was doing rocket stuff and, uh, um, yeah, it was a fantastic experience. Well, it was, it is kind of cool because there's a lot of cool things about you. You don't just go around like dropping names. Hey, I worked for Sally Ride, but I had to throw that out there because I know there's as many people out there that are going to geek out on that as I did. But here's the thing you obviously, you know, interpreting and explaining, I can see everything that you said, how that was a part of your journey. Pilgrim's Progress, John Bunyan writes a character called Interpreter. So Pilgrim gets into the interpreter's house. And there's a gentleman there who explains everything, a lot of his journey. This is why this happened. And he shows him, he takes him into this room and shows him what's going to happen in his journey and different pathways. And I feel that you function that way a lot for people. You have that heart for the person who is kind of beginning their journey. You really have a heart and that's a unique, special gift. You're not out to impress the Christians. You're really out there to help people find their way to God and find their way, you know, kind of over and through the wicket gate, which is uh, kind of what John Bunyan, you know, he, he, he's he's struggling, struggling, struggling. Once he gets over that wicket gate, it's kind of like it's it's a little bit smoother. He understands a little bit more. And that that seems to be your role. But what was the first time for you, Chris, where you kind of realized like maybe it's your first teaching experience or someone gave you opportunity to teach and you kind of realize like, huh? Like, what was your first experience teaching the Bible? Well, well, teaching the Bible actually came after a lot of teaching math. So I, I spent several years uh, going through college uh, making money as a math tutor because I realized I, I had this gift. My mom uh, encouraged me into it. And tutoring one-on-one -on -one really had a, a profound influence on my, my methodology of teaching. And most of the time it was explaining algebra for a kid who didn't understand it. 
And one by one, I started developing methods of teaching chemistry, physics, algebra, all the stuff that, that I was naturally good at for whatever weird geeky reason. Uh, but it's a different thing to understand it than it is to explain it. And having one kid who's lost and confused sitting right across the table from you is very different from teaching an entire audience because you know right away this isn't working. And I kept, I was forced to change my method, change my method. How do I get through to them? And it really gave me, uh, it really brought to life that, that empathy within me to connect with the student. I actually tutor to this day. I love tutoring high school subjects, I, mostly math and science, but I, I still do it largely because it, it continually forms me as a teacher to make that connection one-on-one. -on -one. Now, the first time I got to teach the Bible was actually, uh, my, the one who invited me was my mom, of all people. She got an opportunity at the church I grew up at, and it was a church I wasn't very interested in the opportunity at the time. I was a brand new believer. I was so fired up about God, but I was going back to a church that 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 hadn't reached me that uh that I had been bored at as a kid that it the the word hadn't intrigued me it was largely because we didn't open the bible much i mean we would open the bible read a verse put it away and the the teaching then was about whatever was on the the pastor's mind and that didn't connect with me for years it didn't connect with me and uh, uh and honestly at first I, I god had to really convict me of, of this i was a little bit bitter towards the the church i grew up at now god did take me out on that like pulled me aside and said to me uh, and reminded me how much he loves his bride and that the church is his bride and it was not my place to come in and judge and god did some some real work in my heart for towards the the church but that opportunity i was uh, my mom said hey the the pastor uh, asked if I would teach a message. I want to do it on miracles and uh, want to know. And, and she asked me and my brother to, to speak. And I was just thinking, mom, you don't even believe in Jesus. Why are you speaking in church? <laughs> and, and she, you know, my mom is, uh, um, my mom loves uh, all truth, all believers. And she's sort of a um, relativist. And so she was happy that I believe my thing, but uh, and so for me, I was sort of bitter about it, but I remember when, when God called me out on that one too, I was so itching to, to pass on what I had. And I didn't see myself as a teacher yet, but I just was looking for opportunity to serve God. God, I so want to serve you. Where's my opportunity? Where's my opportunity? And I remember I was driving on the freeway. I remember right where I was on the 805 going over the 52 in San Diego. And, and God just hit me right there as I was like asking God, where's my opportunity? Where's my opportunity? And he just you know, subtly, gently said to me, what about the opportunity I already gave you? And I thought, what? I don't have any opportunities. Oh, that thing mom invited me to do? I don't want to do that. <laughs> and he just, he just called me out to be faithful in what I've given you, not in what you want to do. And that was my first opportunity. Got up and spoke in, in the, the church I, I grew up at, had about five or 10 minutes, spoke uh, about the, the power of God in, uh, I can't remember the, the passage, but I remember I got some feedback for the first time saying, wow, I think you, you might have a gift. You might know what you're doing. Oh, so I really appreciate the opportunity my mom gave me. My mom is a fantastic person, by the way. I, I love what she's done in my life and really informed me as a teacher and a compassionate person. She's, uh, she's pretty fantastic. Hey, like Mr. T said, treat her right. Got to treat your mama right. So that's good that you gave her a shout out. But uh, sorry for those of you that were traumatized by Mr. T singing and my really bad interpretation of it. But uh, this is this is high art, folks. But, you know, as we go into the next stages, obviously you, you kind of, you know, graduated into deeper and deeper levels and in involvement in teaching. What was the next stage for you? So. Really, the, the big one was I was invited to teach a home fellowship. I talked to, to my pastors, to, to Bill and Alan, um, and, and said, hey, we just, God just opened up space for us to move into a home. And uh, I've heard you guys talk about home groups. And I said, maybe our home would be a place. They came back to me a week later and said, okay, we want to use your home and you're going to teach. I said, whoa, whoa, I didn't, I didn't say anything about that. Teaching at a home group was fantastic for my formation of teaching because, again, it was interactive and I was I was hearing when they didn't understand what I was was giving and it was much more conversational. And that really has has informed my style of teaching all along. When I get on a microphone 
and I am in a conversational style and I'm walking through it together, it's because that's that's how I've always done uh, done teaching. And I did that for years. I remember going through the book of Proverbs was the first book we went through. And then uh, and then opportunities were were given by the the pastors to occasionally speak. And then out of nowhere, I was so built up like something's coming. What's my direction for life? And it was uh, it was youth ministry. I did youth ministry for eight years. And uh, and again, one of the things that I say to uh, to teachers who want to teach, one of the best things you can do early on is teach kids, particularly junior high and high school, because you will see on their face when they don't know what you're talking about. And, and again, it it guided my teaching to to teach for their sake, not just what I wanted to deliver from the pulpit. I still love teaching kids. High school is my absolute favorite. It's great. And a lot of people don't know this, but you actually have purposefully, and we're going to have to end here, but you have purposefully continued to tutor over the years for love of the game. And, and you've mentioned before, and maybe yeah. you can say this in about 30 seconds, the reason you still do that. I mean, you don't need the money, you know, it's just kind of something that you've kept up. Talk to us a little bit about why for you personally, you've chosen to stay in tutoring math. So last night I was teaching an eighth grade kid. We were going over algebra and she was, uh, she was learning um, factoring. And the process of t helping a confused kid one-on-one -on -one, and the process that it takes my mind to understand, okay, I know how to do this. My student is confused. How do I find the place where I connect where they are now with what they need to understand and walk them through it step by step. Having a student right across from me, whatever the topic, doesn't matter that the, I'm teaching algebra, I'm teaching physics, that process of working one-on-one -on -one always, it, it forms my mindset as, as a teacher to connect where they are with what they need to know and then walk them step by step through it and then rehearse it until they get it. I'm constantly getting into their shoes, sitting in their chair and understanding where they're at. And that's so good for me as a teacher to be reminded of that because it's so easy to get your pulpit bigger and bigger and further and further away from your audience. I've noticed this. You and I have led uh, churches a little bit together. And I've noticed even when we recently handled the merger, I'll, I'll come in and say my deal. And then afterwards, and I've noticed this in different meetings we've been in, you'll come back like right afterwards and you'll state something on an even more basic level that I'll realize after you've spoken into it, okay, that was the foundation. Perhaps I should have let off it. Chris, Chris will break it down even more simple and, and put it in these building blocks that, that not only clarify, but make me think, okay, I could have even started from that point many people probably didn't have that basic understanding. Right. And I've just kind of picked up on that over the years. And it's a real gift you have. And I think people being able to catch this glimpse into you and, and understand that, man, it, it, it is such a gift to have that ability. So Chris, yeah. I, I, we'll, we'll come back in tomorrow's episode and talk a little bit more about your methodology and how your gift form and, and a couple qualities about you that are unique to you as a teacher, because we're all going to be different. But I want to thank you for your time and also opening up your head a bit, letting us look inside your brain, poke and prod it, push on it, squish on it. And uh, I'm going to hand over to you for our outro. Nice. All right. We'll switch places. I'll take the lead here on the outro because that's how we do this. So uh, that'll do it for today, guys. Thanks for joining us at Teach Through the Word, the podcast for Bible teachers. Tomorrow we'll be back with a little more of my story. And, uh, and talking through some of my growth as a teacher, the opportunities, challenges, and the considerable amount of frustrations and failures in my life. I know it's real easy to, to look at somebody who seems to be successful now and not recognize the, the years of frustration that went into that and the importance of that. So we'll talk through a bunch of that. Each week we will cover, each week here at Teach Through the Word, we bring you one Bible book, one teaching essential, or one guest teacher interview, or one in-house teacher interview. And uh, we'll be back with more of that tomorrow. Peyton, thanks for joining me. Jonathan, well done. As always, we'll see you all back here next time.